Hello friends, today in this video we will see working with cells and sheets of Microsoft Excel. First you have to understand what is the cell. Every worksheet is made up of thousands of rectangles which is which is uh, which uh, which are called what cells. A cells is an intersection of rows and columns. So as you can see here this is what our cell and it is the intersection of rows and columns that means this is the row and this is a column and they are intersection here so it is what a cell so in other words we call it where the cell uh, where the row and column meets now com columns are identified by the letters like this A, B, C, D, E, F and the rows are identified by the numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now each cell has its own name or we can say cell address and this is based on the row and cell number. So in example here if you see this I selected here this cell now if we see this so it is what the column number C and the row number 5. So the address for this cell or we can say the name for the cell will be C5. The column number and the row number. So combination of the column number and row number, the cell name or we can say it's a cell address. Now we can select multiple cells and if we select multiple cells like if I select this uh, we can select normally by clicking and dragging it to this so when you select multiple cells it is called a range cell range now cell range is indicated like this so it indicated like this like it is what separated by colon so if you select the cell if it is what the column A and you selected the cell from 1 to 8 so it will be named as what a 1 colon a it is what 8 so it is the starting cell the range of the cell will be identified by the starting cell of the starting column to the ending cell of the ending column so this is what the starting cell of the column the first column and this is what the ending cell of the last column but both are the column is same because I selected only one column but we can select multiple columns also now to select the cell it is very simple we can select it by mouse clicking by mouse or we can use our arrow keys of the keyboard to move around these cells then selecting the range is also easy you have to just click one cell and then you can drag it to other cells and here it you can see this is selected from this B cell B uh, row number B cell number 5 to row number C a column number C and the row number 18 so the range is what b5 colon c18 this is what the cell range and how you select that that is also simple you can select single cell by clicking one cell or you can select multiple cell by just click and drag to select multiple cells any information now cell content what we can add into cells so any information you enter into the spreadsheet will be stored in the cell and each cell contain different types of content they can contain what they can contain text they can contain formattings they can contain formulas and functions that means whatever text we add we can format them according to our requirement to make it uh, attractive and also the important thing which we add is what the formulas and the functions 
So normally we add what the text. Text can be contain text such as letters, numbers, and even dates. So you can add date, numbers, letters, names, whatever you add, they will consider as a text. Now formatting attributes like cell can contain formatting attributes that changes the way letters, numbers, and dates are displayed. For example, if you add percentage, so percentage can be add like 0.15 or you can say 15%. 15% always we like 0, 0 0.15. So either you can add it like 15 and with the percentage mark or you can give 0 0.15. So you can even change a cell text or background color also. That is what the formatting. We can add different colors to different cells and change the background. Then we can add formulas and functions. Now cell can contain formulas and functions that calculate the cell values. Now in this example here, in this cell, I am calculating the values of total values of these numbers. Now, how I am I'm doing that? I am using a function here. So, in this image, you can see I am using a function here. That is, uh, the function is called sum. We will see this in detail in our next videos. Right now, we are just talking about how and what we can enter in the cells. So, we can enter what the formulas and functions which do what which adds those different values or manipulate those different values based on the function or formula you use so the function or formula can also be added into these cells now when you add those functions or formulas so in the cell you will not see the function or formula you will see the value the outcome but you can see the formula or function what you have typed there in this formula bar that is called it this line this is called formula bar so whatever you type there, you will see that formula in the formula bar. So formula will show in the formula bar and the value, the outcome will show in the cell. And even when you type any text also, it also shows here in the formula bar as a normal text. But specifically when you type any formula or function in the cell, so you can't see the formula or function in the cell. It will show you the outcome, the value, and only the formula you can see here in the formula bar. So it will make you easy to edit the formula also. The formula bar's job is to edit the formula. Now, to insert content, very simple. You just select the cell and then start typing what you want to type. You just select the cell where, where you want to enter something. And then you just start typing what you want to type. So whatever you type, it will be there, it shows there and also you can see here in the formula bar. Even when you type the formula, you can see the formula here and you will see the values here. So just select the cell and then start typing whatever you want to add into the cell. Now to delete or clear the content. So if you are having a content in those cells and you want to clear the content, so you can clear those contents by just selecting the, those cells and then going from this home tab in this clear command, you can clear, you can select clear content. Now it will clear the content of the cells. So for example, I want to clear the content of this cell. I select this line, I select the whole row and then I go here in the home tab. In the home tab, you will go to the editing group. Here you have clear command, there you can select the clear content. Now you can see the content is cleared. Now when you clear the content, it only clears the content. It will not delete those rows or columns. That means they will remain there and they will just get empty. So you can see it is still there, the row and column, only the content is removed. Now if you want to delete it completely, then you can select again that empty one or whatever you want. Then what? You can select those cells by clicking and dragging it 
and then you can go to this home tab cell group you can click on delete and it will delete those cells now when you delete those cells the remaining cells will take place on those deleted cells so suppose this is what the empty one so i select this empty i want to remove this and then i go here and if i delete this one then this cell number 10 it this row number 10 will take place on this empty one so it will come up so i select it i go here in the home tab cell group i click on delete and as you can see here it is deleted and the remaining one is is come up to take the place of that deleted cells just fill the gap now if you want to copy the content so excel allow like normally you copy the content from word you can also copy the content of cells also so you can just select what you want to copy and then from the home tab clipboard group you can click on copy and then wherever you want to go and paste just select those cells and then you can click on paste to paste those values there so if i want to copy this so i select the cell i go here i copy it and when you copy that any cell or multiple cells you will see this dotted lines which is highlighting the cell that means this cell is copied now you want to copy you want to paste it here so you select i'm selecting multiple cells where i'm pasting this single word single cell and then i go here and press and click on paste and you can see the copied cell is pasted here on all these cells now we can also access the additional paste options which is physically convenient when working with cells that contains formulas or formatting just click the drop down arrow on the paste command to see those options and use those options for example if you copy any cell which contains some kind of formula or some kind of different formatting options so you can paste according to your requirement so there are some multiple different options you have paste options that is what advanced paste option so if i select i want to paste it here i copied something i want to paste it here so i go here and i can see this there is an options here this is what normal paste it just paste as it is this one do what paste a formula suppose if you copy a cell where that cell contains any formula so it will copy it will paste only formula not the value the value will not be pasted it will paste only the formula and same as for here it will paste formula and formatting also it will paste it will keep the source formatting this will keep no border it will paste according to the source width then transposed then you have option to values pasting you can paste only value you can paste number formatting with value and you can paste uh, values of values and source formatting also you have options here for only pasting the formatting nothing else you can paste the link you can paste the image also if you are having and you can link the picture also for example i copy this cell and then i want to paste it here now see if i paste normally then what it do you can see it is pasting the value part two there is no formula there so you see it is pasting like this but remember in that we have a x so now what if i want to paste only formatting this is what keeping value values and formatting values and formatting and this is what only formatting now you see it is not pasting the value part 2 it is only formatting it is only pasting the formatting that means the x will become like that part 2 word if i remove it you can see and when i paste it it is not pasting the value it is pasting only the formatting so it is easy to do what copy and you paste a with some multiple other options 
then even you can do drag and drop also so instead of copy and paste you can use directly drag and drop if you want to cut paste or you can do what drag and drop drag and drop that means you select those cells which you want to drag and then when you hover your mouse in the corner you can see these four arrows four way arrows now when you see that four way arrow like this you can click and hold your mouse and then you can drag where you want to drag and then leave your mouse so you drag it and leave your mouse and it will be dragged and it will move so if suppose i want to move this so i select this and now when i hover mouse in the corner we can see that the four side arrow now i click it and then i can drag it and now it is moved from here to here from this column to this column so when you release your mouse it will be moved so again i select this and i move this then we can use the fill handle now fill handle do what if you are copying cell content adjacent cells in the same row or column and the fill handle is good alternative to the copy and paste command so suppose i want to copy this same value into all these multiple other cells so instead of copying and pasting i can use this fill handle so using the fill handle handle you click the cell you select the cell and then go to the corner of the cell here and you will see this plus symbol so when you see the plus symbol click and hold and then drag it so when you drag it if you want to copy in the column and if you want to copy in the cell a row then you will drag this side so it will do what it will automatically copy the cell value into other cells so when you release it will automatically copy so suppose i want to copy this so i select this one and as i go to this corner you can see the plus symbol there so when you see the plus symbol you click and drag it and automatically do what it copy all those cell well the cell value into all the other cells now this fill handle is also useful when you are having some kind of continuum series so whenever the content of a row or column follows the sequential order like numbers like 1 2 3 or days like monday tuesday wednesday so the fill handle can guess what should come next in the series and in most cases you will need to select multiple cells before using the fill handle to help excel determine the series order so if you are having like any series like here you can see number part 1 2 3 so next will come what part 4 part 5 part 6 so you can use this fill handle and fill handle automatically guessed guess that sequence or series by default it do copy but it can guess the series also so when you select those kind of data which has some kind of series so it will do what it will give you option to fill the value in sequence order so when you drag it like this you see it is using what part 1 2 3 4 so like we have here it is not connected so here okay so now what there is a series here 1 2 3 so next will come 4 5 6 now now if i i select this and I click on this and and click on try to drag it like this so you can see excel is automatically detecting what the series so after part 1 2 3 then it start typing what 4 5 6 7 8 that is what excel do with the fill handle 
Now the next thing is to modify your rows in cells, rows, columns and cells. Now modifying means what by default every row and column of the new workbook is set to the same height and width. But Excel allows you to modify those columns width and row height in different ways including wrapping text and merging the cells also. So if you want to modify the width of the column. So but why I want to modify the width in first case. In this C column if you see these values which I have here it is not showing the full value because the cell width is not wide enough to accommodate the whole value. So what I need I need to increase the width of this th column so that the whole value can be seen. So if you want to do that then you move your mouse there in the column boundary and when you see this two arrow then you do what you click and hold it and then you can drag it where you want to drag and when you drag it it will be increased the width of the column so if you want to increase the width of the column so in case here also you can see the billing address the addresses are not showing full addresses because it is not enough wide so i go here in this side and you can see the two way arrow so i hold it and then i can drag it and when i drag it it will increase the size and the column width will be increased like this so when you drag it drag and then leave your mouse Then one more thing you can do, you can use auto fit also. Now auto fit means what? Automatically it will try to fit based on the content. So whatever the content you have, automatically your column will try to fit it. For doing that, go back to this boundary of the column here, top. And then what? When you see this double arrow, then just double click on it. So when you see the double uh, these arrow so just double click on that and then what it will do when you double click it will adjust the cell with the column width according to the content automatically. and it will adjust the column and what automatically now same as for raw also the same you can do for raw also if you want to increase the raw height or width then you can go here in this raw side and when you see this double arrow then just click and drag it to increase or decrease or even you can use auto fit also by double clicking on it so it is increased here Then inserting and deleting and moving and hiding your cells, rows or columns. So it is what increase here. If I want to do auto fit, I click double click here and it will automatically do what fit according to the content. Same as for raw also, you can drag it or you can use auto fit option. You can double click it it will automatically fit according to the content. Now the next thing is to add uh, remove, inserting, deleting or moving or hiding your rows and columns. So when you are working with the workbook, you may need to insert new columns or rows or we can 
delete certain rows and columns and move them from different location in a worksheet or even hide them. So we need to do some time like this. So suppose I want to insert new column here, new row here. So I want to add new row in B after four. So if you want to add new row after four, that means in between this four and five. So you will select what number five, select the row after where you want to add the row. So in case you want to add the row between five, four and five, then you will select row number five. If you want to add row new row into in between six and seven, then you will select what the seven. So you will select the row next to where you want to add the new row and then what click insert from this home tab cell group you click insert here and it will do what it will insert the new row here now when it added the new row the number of the rows will change so the five previously the one which was five it will change to six and the new one will be named as number five so i want to add here in between this four and five so I will do what I will select number five and you will select what the heading of raw so when you click on this heading of raw it will select the whole row. and then what you go to this home tab and in the cell group click this insert command now you can see it is added in between number four and five but number five is now become what number six then same as for column also if you want to insert the new column so same if you want to insert the new column between d and e then you will select what e by selecting the heading so heading of the cell uh, row or column when you go there you will see this arrow so when you see this arrow you will click on it to select the whole row or column now when you select it then what you will go again here in the home tab cell group click on insert and it will add the new column in between this d and e now when it added there so the d the e become what the e become f and the new cell new column will become name as e and so here i want to add so i select this whole column then again i go to my home tab cell group i click on insert now whenever you add new cell or a new row or column you will see this option here by default it do what it actually take the same formatting as the previous one like the d if you can see the width of the cell row column is same as the D not as F S has a different uh, width of the column so you can change those options from here you can say it is saying format same as the left one you want you can change the two same as the right one and now you can see it is having the same as the right one or you can go for clear formatting where it is not inherited any formatting same as for raw also so you can choose which type of formatting you want when you are doing what adding new cell new row or new column then to delete a row or column so when you want to delete then same again it is easy to delete you just have to select the row by clicking on the heading of the row and then you just go from the home tab cell group click the delete command and it will delete the whole row and it will delete now when it is deleting the row number 9 so number 10 will become 9 it will shift up so number 9 will number 10 will shift up to become number 9 and the previous the one which we deleted it will remove now this is not like shifting clearing the content remember when we clear the content it only clears the content the row remains as it is or column remains as it is but when you remove when you delete it so it will delete the whole row or column with the content so if i want to delete this 
so I select this one and now you see when I delete this number 9 so this number 10 overlook it will become number 9 and this will become it will remove so I go here I select the raw I go to the home tab cell group click on delete and it is deleted so it is deleted with the content also Now same as for column also, so if you want to delete the column, again select the column from the heading and then again go to the raw, uh, go to the delete option here, go to the delete option from the cell and delete it. Now one more thing we can do, we can move the raw or column also. So for moving it, again we have to select it. So sometime you may want to move the column or row to rearrange it. So for rearranging those things we can just we want to just move them. So for moving it first again select the row or column by selecting it from the heading. And then you can go here in the home tab in the clipboard click cut. So when you click cut you can see this highlighted dotted lines there that means it is cut. So whenever you do cut or copy it will you will see these lines like this like it is what it, it is it is indicating that this cell or column or row is cut or copy and then what whenever wherever you want to move it so select the column heading to the right of where you want to move that means if you want to move a column between e and f then what you will select you will select column f that means I want to make it here in between this E and F. So I will select the column F and then I will go here and I will say in the home, home group I will go to this and I select this insert drop down. So when you click insert drop down you will see this option insert cut cell. So whatever the cell we have cut we want to add it here. So we'll say insert cut cells and then when you when you select this one that cell that raw that column which you have cut it will paste it here. So I want to move this one so I select this and then I do here uh, from the clipboard I click on cut and as you can see here it is showing like this. Now again I want to paste it in between this E and F so I select the F. Then from the insert tab uh, from the cell group I click this drop down from here and I can see here insert the cut cells and when I click on it. So you can see that one cut that one moved here that one pasted here and before what F now before F that means the cell become the column become E and the blank one goes back to become D they shift each other. Now for hiding also. Now at a time sometime what you want to compare certain rows or columns without changing the organizing of your worksheet. That means I don't want to move any cell or row or column from one place to other place. I know how to move but I don't want to move. I don't want to change the structure but I want to compare some two columns or two rows. Sometimes you have some columns like very far. They are much sometimes they are very far. So you can do what you can hide in between whatever the rows or columns you have in between those which you want to compare. You can hide them. It is not it is not meaning a deleting. It is just hiding for some time. And then when you are done with comparing then you can unhide it again. So if you want to hide those rows or columns, so first select those rows or column and then right click on it and then what you will get this option here to hide. So I want to hide these all like uh, C, D and E. Now they are these are not far like uh, this company name the addresses they are not so much far but suppose they are very far. 
they are somewhere they like somewhere here so it is not possible for you to see both at the same time you either you can see this or either you can see this so what you can do you can hide those columns what is in between so select those columns which you want to hide and then right click on it and when you do right click on it then you will see this hide option so when you hide this you can see the line there that indicates that there are something hidden there and also you can guess by the column heading that is after a b you can see there is directly f that means c d and e is not showing that means they are hidden and now we can compare these two columns easily so no matter how many columns are in between you can just hide them and then you can compare those two columns together now you can see this line this line indicates that these there are some columns which is hidden now if you want to unhide them so for unhiding those which is hidden so you have to select what the column before hidden columns or rows and a column after hidden rows or column that means the one which is before hidden and the one which is after hidden and then when you do right click you will see unhide command and then when you click on it it will unhide those rows or columns which is hidden so there are hidden in between b and f so i will select b which is what uh, before hidden and then f which is after hidden and then when i right click i get the unhide option and when i click on it it will unhide that rows or columns which was hidden now wrapping the text and merging the cell whenever you have too much cell content to display in a single cell so you may decide to wrap up the text or merge the cell rather than rising the column with a height so wrapping the text will automatically modify the cell row height and allow cell content to be displayed on multiple lines so merging allows you to combine a cell with adjacent empty cells to create one large cell so if suppose there is a cell where you are not able to fill the whole content is not showing there then what you can do you can use you don't want to increase the width of the cell then what you can do you can merge you can do text wrapping so when you do the text wrapping it will try to adjust try, do not try it will not uh, extend the size of the width of the cell it will try to adjust it into the same width but it will create multiple lines but when it create multiple lines it will do what it will increase the height of the cell now in case if you don't want to increase the height of the cell then what you can do merge the two cells so you can merge two cells together to accommodate what the whatever the text you have in the cell so if suppose this is my cell and you can see it is not showing the full content of that cells because the height the width is not enough to show that then what i can do use the text wrapping so for that you just select the column first from the heading and then click on from the home tab alignment group click on this wrap text and when you do that 
it will wrap the text into the same width and it will create two lines here now it will increase the height so i select this column and then i go here from the home tab this alignment group i click on this wrap text and you can see it do what it try to adjust the content into the same width but for doing that it increases the size of cell the height of cell so if you do not want that then you can do merge the cells so you can merge two cells to get the content fitted into the single uh, in a single line without increasing the height so simple if you want to merge two cells then you select two cells the two cells through three cells whatever and then you can click from here in the home tab alignment group you can click merge and center so it will do what it will merge and also it will uh, center the text what is inside the content inside those cells and it will be like this so like i have here this is in this first cell and i want to merge these whole cells here so first i select all these cells and then i will click here merge and center so it do what it merge all those cells to become a single cell and also it centers the text you have other options also available for doing this merging so if you click on the drop down menu here you will see these other options merge center is the default one then you have option merge across merge cells or unmerge cells so those options are like merge center that means merge the selected cell into one cell and centers the text merge across it will do what merge the selected cells into large cell, large cell while keeping each row separate that means if you are merging multiple rows and columns so it will do what it will merge the uh, selected cell into single cell while keeping each row separate that means the rows will separate this one do what merge cell it will merge the selected cells into one cell but does not center the text and this one do what it will unmerge the cells so if i have already merged it so i can do unmerge that means i select this and then i go here drop down and i select unmerge and now it goes back to normal again i can do what i can select this merge cell only merge cell so when i select this one so it do what it merges the cell but the content will not go to center it was already in center that is why it is showing center now you see the cell content is remaining on the left side only it is doing what merging the cell and if you do this merge center then it will do merge now if you select multiple rows and columns if i select uh, columns and rows and if i select this merge center then it will create what single cell of all those rows and columns you can see it creates the single cell of all those rows and columns it is having three row uh, three rows and three columns now again i will unmerge it this is normal now there is an option there for merge across now it will do what it will merge the columns but not the rows now you can see we have three different rows so rows are not merged but the columns are merged three columns are merged to create single cell but the rows are not merged so these are the different options of merging your cells now 
if you are working with multiple worksheets so every workbook contain at least one worksheet so whenever you open new workbook by default it has one worksheet but when working with a large amount of data you can create multiple worksheet to help organize your workbook to make it easier to find content so you can also group worksheet to quickly add information to multiple worksheet at the same time that means if you are having a multiple sheets you can create multiple sheets so if you want to create another sheets or multiple sheets so right now suppose here i have these multiple sheets january february that means i have arranged the data according to month so i have multiple sheets so if you want to create all more sheets then what you will do in this side you have this plus option it is saying what new sheet so if you want to create the new sheet so you go to this and click on this plus symbol it will add the new sheet into your workbook and when you click on it it will add new sheet in your workbook so if i want to add new here so i click on this plus symbol and now you can see we have a new sheet which is having the name sheet 1 why it is saying sheet 1 because these other sheets name are already changed then we can do what we can do copy and move those sheets now sometime we need to duplicate the content or we not we need to move the content remember it is saying what both copy and move so if you want to move or copy some sheet then what you do right click on the sheet that means right click on the name of the sheet you will see these options and in that option you see this move or copy so actually it is moving and copying both at the same time it is having a small difference so when you click on it it will open the dialog box this dialog box now the move or copy dialog box have you option to choose that where you want to put your sheet that means you are copying or moving first you have to decide that one and you will decide by this so if you want to move your sheet then you will not select this one and if you want to copy your sheet then you will select this one so this one means selecting this one means you are creating a copy and if you are not selecting this one that means you are moving your sheet so it is asking you like before sheet that means this is the sheet so where you want to move it or where you want to copy it before which sheet we have these sheets so it says before which sheet you want to copy so you have to select the sheet where you want to copy it or move it and then when you select it it will move to that place so if suppose this is the sheet this is my sheet and if i click if i want i click on it i say move or copy now in this dialog box we have option to before which sheet it is asking and you can see it is not selected here so if i don't uh, select this one it will do what it will copy it will move or if you want to do copy then you have to select where you want to copy and then you have to select this and you have option here move to end so if you select this that means it will go end of the workbook so end of all the sheets so i select end and press okay and i select copy also so you can see it is here also and it is uh, copied into the end and now you have number 2 november number 2 because the one is already there then what you can do rename also so if you want then you can rename your uh, sheet so by default it gives you this name but you can change any time like these ones which is already change so for changing the rename or changing this uh, uh, renaming this worksheet so what you do right click again on the sheet and then you will select what rename and now you can name any what you want and then press enter so it will rename so i want to rename this one so i right click here i select rename and then we can type what we want to type and then press enter 
it is renamed then we can move also now for moving it we can choose right click and move or we can do drag and drop for directly moving it so it is easy for moving it by just dragging and dropping it so if you want to drag and drop so you click and hold the sheet which you want to drag and move and then when you move your mouse so you will see this arrow it indicates that where you want to move suppose i want to move here so i will whenever i see this arrow i leave my mouse so when you reach to your desired location you just leave your mouse and the sheet will move to that place so if i want to move this i click and hold this sheet and you can see now the arrow and then you can move along you can see the arrow it is indicating that here you want to move so you can go the place where you want to move so i want to move after november so i select this arrow after november and then i leave my mouse and then it comes here after november just like this then what you can do change the color of your sheet tab so for easy to just uh, make it easy to identify like you have multiple sheets so thus you want to highlight some sheet specific sheet so you can do what you can make a different color for that so that it will be it looks different so for doing that right click again on the sheet and you will see the menu from there you can select the tab color and from the tab color you can choose whatever the color you want and then when you leave it it will be changed to that color so if i want to change the color for this this is specifically different sheet so i right click here and from the color tab i can choose what color i want now you will not see the color until you deselect and you select some other sheet it is not showing the color here when i select another sheet then you can see the color clearly then you want to delete the sheet again if you want to delete the sheet so what just right click on the sheet and then select delete so when you want to delete so just go there right click on the sheet and select the delete option and it is deleted very simple now one more thing we can do we can create a group or we can uh, group those multiple sheets also you can work with each sheet individually or you can work with multiple worksheets at the same time so worksheet can be combined together into a group any changes made one worksheet into one worksheet in a group will be made to every worksheet in the group so that means suppose we have multiple sheets there and i want to add a common thing a common change into all those sheets so instead i can do it individually i can go to individual sheets and i can do change all those things or instead doing separately i can do what i can group all those sheets together and then what when i do change in one sheet it will be changed it with the same changes will be applied to all the other sheets that means you can create group and you can make change into one sheet the first sheet and then it will be applied to all the other sheets in the group so for grouping it first select one sheet the first one and then hold the control key hold the control key and then click on other sheets which you want to add it into the group and when they are in the group you can do change those sheets together so we are having these sheets here and uh, we want to make them into a group so i'll do what i select the first one then control then i will select other sheets now these sheets are all same format now what i want to edit so i want to give some note here
Now the changes what I did here, it is applied to all the other sheets at the same place in the same format. So after you done, you can do what you can ungroup them. So for ungrouping them, you can right click again and you can select ungroup or you can just select any other sheet which is not in the group. Suppose if I select this one, then automatically the group will be ungrouped. So there is two way either you can select the cell which is not in the group, the sheet which is not in the group or you can right click and select ungroup. So I can right click here and I can select ungroup. Now they are not in the group but remember I did change here in this March. Now I go and check in April. You can see the same thing here in May also the same thing in June we have same in July we have same in August we don't have because it was not in the group or when you add those into group and when you want to ungroup you can just select the other sheet which is not in the group and the, the other sheets will be ungrouped. So this is what in this topic for working with the cells and worksheets. I hope you have liked this video. Now next time we will see some other things. Till then have a good day and thank you.